If you haven't made a scone lately, this is your sign that it's time to make one. I'm gonna lead you through each step so you feel comfortable and confident in making a delicious lemon poppy seed scone. It's the base for so many good things and I'm gonna show you how. Let's make them. Everyone loves a good scone. And if you don't, that's because you maybe haven't had a really good one. So these lemon poppy seed scones are my all purpose go-to scone. What I love about them is I'm gonna show you that I love to use them for berry season. Berry season is coming up, whether it's strawberry, blueberry, raspberry. These are a great placeholder for a shortcake. So instead of like a biscuit or something, you can use these scones as a bed for those beautiful berries. So what we're starting with is lemon. And we wanna make sure we infuse these with lemon. Lemon is fresh, lemon is delicious, and you know what lemon goes really well with? Any berry you are gonna use. It adds so much flavor and it brings out the flavor of those berries. So what I'm doing first is taking organic lemons here, I've washed them, and I am zesting them. Now if you think they have a wax coating on them, you wanna boil them in some water just quickly so it kinda gets that wax coating off. But then, otherwise, after they're scrubbed, I'm making sure I get all that essence off. This is where all the essential oils live, that bright yellow part, and leave the white part. But look at all that. And I, I cannot tell you enough how the zest is what flavors so much of this because it's where the oils live in that lemon. The juice we're gonna use too a little bit. But it's that zest that just adds so much to it. So you can see here, I'm really taking my time to make sure I get that beautiful zest grated off the top. And see how bright yellow it is? It's gorgeous. Like you can't go wrong with this. So once we have all that zest, we're gonna put it right here into this bowl. Look at that. It's infusing the kitchen right now and it smells amazing. To that, we're gonna add some sugar. Now, scones don't need to be way sweet. They're not a cake. There's just scones. So we're gonna add some sugar in there. And we're gonna actually work that together with our hands. You've seen me do this before. This is what really starts to bring out those essential oils. The sugar's an abrasive. And when you start doing this, it just, look at that. It breaks down the zest and makes the most flavor you can have. This is like one simple little step that makes a huge difference. And it starts to become like this wet, sandy, beautiful texture. Ah, oh, it's gorgeous. So to this now, we can just build the rest of our dry ingredients. So for the dry ingredients, it's pretty simple. I mean, if you've made scones, you know how easy they are, but we're gonna do some flour. Instead of, you know, sifting flour, I always just overfill and then lightly push off. That's how you don't pack it in to the measuring cup. You don't wanna pack it in because then you'll have way too much flour. And you don't want your scones to be dense, so you wanna make sure you do that. So we're gonna put that right in there. To that, of course, we need some salt. Salt is essential. It's gonna counteract the sweetness, it's gonna bring out more flavor. And then some baking powder. Again, essential for a scone. Like a biscuit somewhat. So we're gonna put that right in there. And now I just wanna take a whisk. And we're just gonna whisk this all together. So you just wanna whisk it together just so everything incorporates evenly. That's really all we're doing. Now remember that sugar has a little bit of wetness to it, if you wanna say. And don't let that make you fearful. It's just normal. So we're gonna put that in because those essential oils from that lemon slightly moisten that sugar. So now that that's all mixed together, we just have to move on to our wet ingredients, which are really simple. We have some buttermilk. Buttermilk, the flavor again, that's just gonna work with these. We're gonna add an egg to it, and we're gonna add it right in there. We're gonna whisk that together. But first, we're gonna put a little bit of that lemon juice in. Now, I don't want a lot. The lemon juice never flavors a baked good quite as much as that zest will. So I want just some of it to kind of add another layer of the lemon, because they do sit different the juice towards the actual zest. So we're gonna put some juice in there, just from one of them, and then we're gonna whisk this together until it's smooth, and we can add it right then on top of that dry mixture. So that's all mixed together. Now, before I actually mix everything, I wanna make sure I put in some poppy seeds. Yeah, I know, you know, there's really no flavor to them, but they do make a difference. Once all those poppy seeds are easily mixed in, we're just gonna add butter and I have it cubed up ready to go. So we're really mixing this in like a pastry. So it really does have a short kind of quality to it just like a shortbread would. See, it's perfect for berries. So I'm picking it up between my thumb and forefingers. I take pieces that are coated in flour and I just squeeze them. They don't need to be perfect right now. We're just doing it until it's somewhat of an even consistency. So we're gonna get big pieces, small pieces, but you just wanna work them in and it will start to create a pastry dough. So you can see after just a couple minutes how it works together. And do you see how there's some bigger pieces of butter, but most of them are worked in. It kind of holds a slight fist, but then it crumbles. That's exactly what you want. So you can kind of make a well in the center and just pour in now this wet mixture. It has that egg, that buttermilk, a little bit of lemon juice. And this is where it's gonna get a little messy, a little fun, 
but you just want to start working that in with the liquid and you're going to kind of have this shaggy-ish dough. It's not going to be pretty at first, but just trust the process. This is where if you haven't made scones, you just need to trust it. But look how beautiful that is. You don't need to actually do too much more now than this because what we're going to do now, it's going to be wet. It's going to be wet. We're going to put flour out onto the board, board, my counter. And you can be generous with the flour. You just wanna make sure you have flour out and you're gonna put all these pieces right in front of you. And if they're wet, just flour your hands. What we're gonna do is just work them together a few times until they wanna start holding. And you can see it starts just to kind of hold this cohesive mass. Do you see that beautiful, how just perfect this is? Scones don't have to be complicated. They don't have to be hard. They just have to be good. And the thing is, this is what's gonna make them good. We have those pieces of butter, so there's gonna be a flakiness to them, but they're not as flaky as like a pie crust. They have more of a cakiness than that. So what I wanna do is just give them a couple turns here until I can get a nice round shape to it. I don't want any cracks really. So I'm just slowly turning it until I can kind of turn it in on itself and press it out into a beautiful round. And that's really all we want. So make sure you keep it floured underneath just so as we're gonna cut it, it doesn't stick. And if you look, how beautiful that is. We're just patting it out into a round. Now, what I'm gonna do is just make slight triangles for my scones, because that's what I like. But you can do whatever works for you. I'm just making it a nice disc here. I have my parchment line baking sheet ready to go, and I'm just gonna cut it down to triangles. So we're gonna use a bench scraper, a knife, whatever works for you. I'm gonna cut it equally. And if you need to, you can flour that too. So like if it's wanting to stick, just Stick it in your flour, and we're cutting them out evenly into perfect little scones. Look at these, aren't they beautiful? These really do look just perfect. So all of them are cut now, and we can just place them right on the baking sheet. Look, I mean, okay, how excited are you? I'm, I'm pretty excited for these. I think they're beautiful, I think they're fun, and the best part is they're easy. So you can make these with kids, they're great to give as gifts, but they're also just nice to have on hand at home. You don't need to go to a bakery, you can make these things. So I do wanna brush the tops with a little bit more buttermilk, I put a little bit more in my measuring cup. And then we're gonna put just a little bit of a sugar on top. So when you brush them, you give them just a slight glue pretty much for that to stick to the sugar and to make sure that sugar stays on top. It also gives them just ever a slight coating. It's not a glaze, it's not like an egg wash, but it gives them just a little heft to them, which I like on top. And you just wanna make sure you get it all around there. And then once they're all brushed, all we need to do is put some raw sugar. What that is, is big crystals of sugar. And so it's gonna give them that crackly top. It's little steps like this that makes something seem more gourmet, fancy, bougie, whatever you wanna call it, but really is so simple to do at home. I keep the sugar on hand. I use it all the time at Christmas on certain cookies because when you put it on, it just gives that crackly top. My ginger snap cookies, my molasses ginger snaps, they have this on top. And so when they get the crackly, beautiful baked quality to them in the oven, it just opens up and you see all this sugar on top. Now we're gonna put these right into a hot oven. We're gonna let them bake. I'll show you how I love to eat them and serve them. Believe me, they're good. As you can see, they baked beautifully. They have that crusty brown top. It has a nice crackle to it. Now, if you want, just because we're alive and wanna live the best life, you can gild the lily. So I have some powdered sugar. I have one of the lemons we zested. You can cut it open, add a little bit of that to some powdered sugar, and the amount will change depending on how thick you want it. But just whisk that in, and you're gonna slowly get a delicious, beautiful glaze. And this is only, hey, it's only if you want to, but it's kind of like, why not? Especially if you're gonna make these for something special, people coming over, a friend, whatever it is. Now you can see, look at that beauty. So if you want to, you can just kind of take it. I like to whisk it and then let it just want to fall off and go, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So you can do whatever you want. You don't have to do them all or you can, and it's just like, oh, there, that's a little bit better. My first one got a little happy. But look at that beautiful, just glaze on them. Now, if you wanna glaze them, go ahead. If not, don't. I'm gonna take the one that I somehow just put like way too much glaze on. Now, if I'm gonna choose how to serve this, this isn't traditional at all. With Now, these are American scones, remember that. These are not scones like other places maybe have, but I'm gonna open mine up. And this isn't normal, this is more like a shortcake, but I like to Look at the beautiful interior. Oh, 
Look at all those poppy seeds. That's beautiful. Now, again, not normal for us Americans, but if you can find clotted cream, talk about gilding the lily. That's what this will do. It's a beautiful, rich cream that you can just put with them. Now, usually you would have these with a different type of scone, but I'm gonna put these with these scones because I still love it. And a few macerated raspberries, just a little, little bit of sugar with some fresh berries. And then look at that. Like, there's nothing wrong with that picture right there. It's all beautiful, it's perfect. Now, this isn't an everyday treat, but it's one you're gonna want once in a while because it's so good that it just makes you happy. And isn't that the point of baking, to enjoy it and just appreciate it? It's delicious. What I love, the scones have just a hint of lemon and it marries so well with fresh berries brings out that brightness in them, and it just has enough of a subtleness that you could eat these on their own and they're a delicious scone. You can add things like a whipped cream or a clotted cream, fresh berries, think strawberry season, blueberry season, raspberry season, and enjoy these in a special way. These are one of my favorite ways to just enjoy the season. And this is a great recipe to use furthering your other recipes. So if you wanna change it up later, make this one first, see how it works. You have to get used to the flour and working it together, but then you can change up the flavors and enjoy it. So what I hope you do with this, make scones, share scones, bring people together around good food. That's what good food does. Share this recipe around. When others see it, they may too realize they can do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Check my website, wiseguide.com for this recipe and all my others. Until next time, I hope you enjoy something of the season, like raspberries on top of a scone.